Hi everyone and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about WebAssembly. Uh, to better understand how WebAssembly works, it might be beneficial to reverse engineer an application to see how WebAssembly opcodes are used on a real-life scenario. The code used for this example is a C function created in the previous post, which is this one, which then you will need to compile as a WASM file using this command line over here. And you can remove the optimization option. It might just make your code more confused. And then once the code is compiled as a WASM, the command below will disassemble the bytecode, which finally reveals the opcodes. Now, before we uh, proceed with the analysis of the opcodes, just have a look at this table over here, because I'm showing you some abbreviation that I'm using in the comment section. So let's have a look at the code. For the time being we won't cover function 0. Let's jump to function 1 which is our email checker. First instruction is going to create some space for 186 local variables because they start from 0 to 185 so these are 186. These are all integers. Now, the value of the stack pointer is read from the index 0 of the global variable vector and pushed onto the stack. As a global variable can be accessed by all functions, they are perfect for the stack pointer. Now, the stack pointer is popped off the stack and stored into element 1 of the local variable vector. Now, the integer 32 is pushed onto the stack. The integer 32 is popped from the stack and stored into element 2 of the local variable vector. And now we have some math because we have a subtract subtraction and we have uh, this value minus this one. And then the result is going to be stored into the element 3 of the local variable vector. Now the value stored into the element 3 of the LVV is pushed onto the stack. This one set the global value using this. And these two are used by this function over here, which is going to be storing element. Right? Now, um, this function means that this value is going to be stored with alignment 2, which means 32 bits, and offset 24, and an effective address, which is equal to 24 plus this value. Again, 2 means 32. If it was 0, it would be 8 bit. If it would be, if it was 1, then it would be 16 bit, and so on. The alignment is a promise to the virtual machine that execute the code that the stored data uh, effective address will be aligned at n bits. If the effective address of an axis is a multiple of the alignment value, then the axis is aligned. One should never promise more than the platform can support, and usually uh, misaligned axes are slower than aligned ones, and that's the reason why you want to get uh, aligned axis. Let's jump here. Byte size address for the i32.store, so very similar to what we've done here, but the offset is 20 here, so the effective address is going to be different. And here, you are loading the values, right? Which means you're probably going to get the same result, right? Um, and again, 
even you look at here, these are two blocks. Uh, blocks always uh, they, they are always put at the beginning of loops and cycles. And these cycles, uh, these blocks always need an AND close. Also, you're going to be using AND to exit functions, right? And then, once the bytecode that defines the email checker function ends, the output continues showing those service functions the mscript and compiler implicitly includes and exports as they are required to run the code. Look at this. Clearly, this is a function that is used to uh, initialize the stack, right? And look at the code. So the current WebAssembly page size is 64k bit. Uh, and then that's the max addressable memory. And there's these two values are both ended. This one is going to set the stack pointer the end of the stack, right? And then the function exit via the end. We talked about the end before, right? So the end can close both these loops and uh, the functions also. Now this function get the size of free space left on the stack. And this one is really, really um, immediate right it's it's really easy to understand what this means right and then this one get the address of beginning of the stack when empty even this one should be pretty easy to understand this one get stack address when full because that's the end of the stack right And then we have some more of these uh, service function, and you can you can keep on uh, having a look at those. This is quite interesting to understand how the uh, WebAssembly opcodes work, right? Now, next, let's have a look at the output of this program over here, which is still part of the same suite that we use over here, right? And in fact, uh, this is a standard tool of the WebAssembly binary toolkit, which takes a WASM file in input and produces an equivalent C code with other files. As the complete code listing is extremely verbose, we will only have a look at the mscripted underscore stack underscore init function as its bytecode was shown above, right? Uh, so here and here, right? And in fact, you can recognize some value, you know, the max addressable memory over here, and then this number over here, right? And for those that are familiar with C, maybe this um, piece of code might say uh, more than the one above, right? And I guess for this post, it will be it will be all. Thank you very much. Uh, please, if you can share share my my post, share my video. Uh, like, subscribe and thank you very much.